Hi guys, Miranda here from Smart Mama Smart Kids. Okay, so today I'm having a chat about um, setting boundaries with your children. So, setting boundaries, uh, it's a topic that a lot of people don't like, a topic that a lot of people get worried about, a topic that makes a lot of parents go, oh, what am I going to do about setting boundaries with my children? How do I do that? All those questions. So first of all, why is it important to set boundaries with your children? Well. It can be a bit of a no-brainer, but it is so, so important to set boundaries with your children for a few reasons. So number one is, excuse my wobbly handwork, um, number one is they really, really need to know where they stand. So kids don't know where they stand if you don't give them advice or if you don't give them clear, clear boundaries to stick to from day one. So basically your toddler's not going to know that it's not okay to hit people if you don't tell them or don't... Um, demonstrate to them when they do do that that that's a boundary so if you haven't shown them and go no 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 we don't hit people then they're not going to know it sounds really simple but I mean some people just expect kids to know that and they don't they don't know if you don't tell them so basically it's important to set boundaries because then kids like to be clear about it because then they've got something to follow and something that they know what not to do if you know what I mean um, the other thing is that if you are going across a bridge and it didn't and it didn't have any um, guide rails or anything like that didn't have anything to sort of guide you on the way that you needed to go would it be scary mm -hmm. like think about going across the west gate if you're from melbourne or you know whichever bridge nearest to you that's a really big bridge i mean life's pretty big so if you went across a bridge and it didn't have any guardrails any boundaries any guidelines nothing that would be really really scary like that would literally be so scary and probably most of us would choose not to do that so um, as like kids need boundaries in life because it helps them to know where the spot to walk is like where the place places that are okay to be are so it makes them go okay I know that I'm allowed to act within these boundaries and it is like every kids that have reasonable boundaries that are enforced or not enforced but are like yeah enforced is the word isn't it really if um, kids have reasonable boundaries that are enforced those kids are the happiest they know where they stand they know what they can do and they also know how to push those boundaries yes because that's a kid's job but they generally know how to act in life especially if their parents have been consistent and fair and caring and have set reasonable boundaries those kids know how to act within those boundaries really really well so, and they're the kids that usually find, you know, get along well with their parents as well and get along well with other people because they know the boundaries. They know what the social boundaries are and things like that. So, number one, you need to be able to give your kids good boundaries because it gives them happy spaces to be able to go, I know where I fit in. I know how to follow and how to feel confident that I am doing what I should be doing. Because kids that don't have boundaries don't know what they should be doing and they're stressing out, really, underneath stressing out a lot because they don't know how, like whether what they're doing is okay all the time. They've always got this level of like, uh, am I stepping over the boundary or am I not? Because I don't know what the boundary is. So nearly constantly stepping over it and the poor kids don't know, they just feel stressed and un an underlying sort of sense of anxiety all the time, yeah? So that's one of the, re the main reason why we set boundaries. We all obviously set boundaries to save our sanity as parents. Yes, we set boundaries to save our sanity. No, you cannot have anything you want to eat out of the pantry because I don't have any more food. <laughs> or I don't want you to, you know, obviously I don't want you to be unhealthy as well, but mainly because, no, I don't want to get up and make you 17 sandwiches in an afternoon. If, if your kids are anything like mine, they would just eat all day. So, no, some boundaries are to save our sanity and to it's still to teach healthy things, obviously. Um... Lots and lots of reasons we set boundaries. Um, one of the big ones for me is social boundaries. So teaching kids, as I said before, no hitting like when they're little kids. Um, like lots and lots of different social boundaries. <laughs> wow, there are so many. Um, even just the way you reply to people, the way that you need to <clears throat> like RSVP when you're going to a party, which a lot of people don't do. Hello, RSVP. Seriously, RSVP. I've forgotten to. Yes, it does happen, but RSVP to parties, seriously. Anyway, um, kids need to know, no, kids need to be taught social boundaries by their parents. Now, teachers can do that stuff, but the kids are gonna do what the parents show them what to do. So if you guys show your kids social boundaries, then they will understand social boundaries. AKA, I'm, I've got a husband, I'm a wife, I do not go 
for instance, I don't go out and sit with other guys and have really big, big, big conversations with them, for instance, because I'm married to my husband. I don't have, like, other people's wives don't come over and have big chats with my husband or, like, I mean, that's a, you know, that's just not what we do. Like, for us, that's a social boundary. Like, I feel like mm, that's not really okay. That's not something that you do. So I don't know what you guys do, but that, for me, is something. Um, another one is, um, let me think. Just oh, there's so many. So just be um, being polite to each other, like that sort of thing. Having manners, having please and thank you. So 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 many social boundaries, and even just going, yes, I'm going to go to this party, and I need to know what the dress code's going to be. Like that's and obviously when kids are older, when they're really little kids, I'm not going to go to the table at the party. You know, I've got a six year old. She knows when she goes to a friend's birthday party, she does not just go to the table and just scoff her face full of chips the whole time. She waits her turn in, you know, for pin the tail on the whatever it is now on the unicorn <laughs> all those things so <clears throat> lots of social boundaries like that if your children know those social boundaries they don't find themselves getting told off or annoy like annoying other people or those sorts of things anywhere near as often because they know what the social boundaries are and really the only time they ever get um, pulled up is if they've chosen to go over it or if the people that they're with have a different social boundary to us so Basically, social boundaries, really, really need them. So how can you start to teach your child boundaries? Well, obviously some of those ways I've just mentioned, you need to be really clear about it. So when your kids, your kids are really, really little, for instance, can't let my son pull my daughter's hair. He's not quite one, she's not quite three. I can't let him pull her hair. So he's doing it anyway, and I'm actively needing to show her that I care enough about her to go and stop him from doing it every 50 times a day at the moment but anyway that's just one of them um so hold setting boundaries and keeping your kids to those boundaries you haven't eaten your crusts you therefore can't have a you know a biscuit after lunch because you haven't eaten your crusts yet and my three-year-old just today it chucked the biggest or not quite three chucked the biggest tanty about that she's like oh, i don't want to eat my crust blah, 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 blah. Oh, i just can't eat anything else i'm too full blah blah boundary you can't have that until you've eaten your crusts for me that was just I just wanted her to do it because she never wants to <laughs> and it's a pain so anyway and she's just she's still she's actually at home right now still having not eaten her crusts but we've just put them in a container put the lid on and said before you have anything else you're gonna have these crusts today because I'm making a bit of a point of it today but anyway you're gonna have these because this is what you have to do you have to eat your food before you get to have yummy food afterwards in our house so also how do we set boundaries as a parent the other thing that is really, really super helpful that I've discovered since having kids is being prepared. So something that's really, really helpful is being prepared when you are setting boundaries for your children. So if you know there's a boundary that they're probably going to be crossing or that they've crossed a thousand times before or, and they're still trying to do so, or if they are, if it's something that you think might happen when so-and-so happens, like for instance, one child gets a present and the other child doesn't for some reason. I mean, it happens, doesn't it? Let's be real. Sometimes it happens for some reason. Anyway, I'm um, going, oh, how am I gonna cope with that situation? What strategies have I got in place? Or what can I pre, sort of pre-think about, preempt? What can I prepare in my mind even? Even if you write it down, sometimes it might help. But preparing in your mind something that you can do to help yourself not give up the boundary, but help the child who's gonna be struggling with that probably <laughs> to actually move through it. So the idea is not that you just stand there as a big angry parent and say, do it, do it, do it. Yes, well, that has to happen sometimes. But yes, the idea is that you help your child achieve what they need to achieve or you help them keep to the boundary. It is not just about laying down a rule and then saying, like it or lump it, that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing. Some of it is about, okay, well, there's this boundary and I've set it and I don't want to give up this boundary because then I'm giving in to what, you know, what you're doing. But... I'm gonna help you keep it by doing this. Or how about we do this together and that will mean that your mind's taken off that. I'm distracting you. It's the biggest thing for kids, isn't it? Distraction. So basically you can help your kids through, help them to meet a boundary or to, to you know, move past a boundary without having too much of that confrontational stuff. Because the confrontational stuff, sometimes it's about seriously about pride for the kid. And you know what it's like, like we sometimes don't, I don't love backing down from an argument. I don't love backing down and going, oh, actually you're right, so that's fine. I'll just get away with no, not losing any face. 
That doesn't happen. You feel like you feel just ridiculous if you've been going on about something and then you lose the argument or you have to give in. You feel just Ugh. so the kids kids can feel the same. Kids can feel like just beaten down because they have to do what you say. So sometimes being someone who you still have, you don't give in, you still they still have to do what you say or what you said they had to do, but sometimes a little bit of help. Sometimes a bit of, do you know what? You still have to eat all your tea, but I'm gonna help you. Or you're like two or whatever. I'm going to help you with that. Or, um, I don't know, you have to clean up your room, clean up 10 things and I'll come back and see how well you're going and then we'll clean up the rest. So something that gives them a strategy, something that helps them to go, okay, there's a way through this and mum or dad are still caring, they're still want the best for me, they still love me enough to be looking out for me, to be helping me, but I still have to do this thing. Like in, at the end of the day, they understand that you did not give in, as long as you didn't say you have to clean your room by yourself, but now I'm helping you, mm, that doesn't really work. But as long as they understand that you're not giving in, but you still care. Hugest thing for kids. Don't give in when you've said something, but you still care because it's not about I'm not caring about you that's got nothing to do with it that's a that's totally different it's about I care so much about you that we're going to have this boundary and then I'm going to help you keep that because it's good for you okay so most of all with boundaries it should if you can avoid it turning into a confrontation but still keep your boundary you are winning that's a massive you know parent win right there because if you can do that you've succeed, like pretty much succeeded right then and there. Okay, and the final thing in setting boundaries is have a think about the boundary before you set it. It can be really hard, it's easy to quickly go, oh no, I'm going to just, you know, you have to do this now. It's easy to do that, but it, it's not always helpful. So sometimes it's good to go, I've found so much better to go in my head, not so much to the kids, but in my head to go, if they act like this, this is how I'm gonna respond. For instance, if they're rude to me, my kids get a time, it's, I call it a timeout, but it's actually in the same room as me. Um, yeah, you've got a timeout for, um, you know, your age plus one minute. That's what I do. So my nearly three-year-old has three minutes. She'll be going up to four minutes when she has turns three. Um, if, she's, if they're rude to me, boom, they're straight in the corner and they're not to get up. So until the time has gone off. So for me, that's something that I do for rudeness. And sometimes I put up with a little bit too much and I'm like, gee, I really wish I did this an hour ago because then it would have probably stopped an hour ago. But yeah, so anyway, be prepared. Or oh, I said that before, but be prepared and also be, just have a little think about what you're gonna say as a boundary or as a disciplinary, disciplinary action afterwards. So you can't just say, right, you're grounded for the next three weeks or that's for older kids, but you know, or you can't just say, right, you know, no dessert. I mean, that what? I, that's quite a harsh one. And are you gonna follow through with that? I mean, unless I haven't eaten their tea. But yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it has to be something that you can follow through with that they're not gonna be like sincerely punished by for a little tiny so, thing. Anyway, that's my little spiel on boundaries. If you've got some ideas on boundaries or things that you would like to know about boundaries, please, please, please add some comments below or Add some comments on whatever you can and um, or email me smartmamasmartkids at gmail.com because this is a super huge um, interest area of mine is how people can set good boundaries with their children without just wrecking themselves. That's what I've got to say about boundaries. Um, I hope you guys are having an awesome day and hit me up if you want to know anything else. Catch you later. Bye.